Many people who write to me feel that they have unusual psychic or writing abilities, or sense an outstanding need to help others. They constantly compare what they do with what they think they are capable of, but often without making a start toward the development of their own abilities. They want to write great philosophical theories, for example, perhaps never putting the pen to the paper or trusting themselves enough to begin. Some want to help the world at large, but all they do is think about this desire without trying to implement it in all its practical terms. The ideal in their minds becomes so great that they are always dissatisfied with their own performance, yet they are afraid to make a start. The loving acknowledgement of your own uniqueness would in itself show them how to begin to use their own abilities in their own way, and to trust their present situation. The ideal is not yet materialized. It is just the essence of a direction. But that direction can only be found by using what you have in the now that you know, and by acquiescing to your own opportunities and abilities, and using those through the power of the present. There is certainly nothing wrong in asking for help from others when you think that you need it, and sometimes much to be gained. There are those who make a practice of seeking aid from others, however, using this as a means of avoiding responsibility. In specific physical problems, help should be sought in areas in which you have little knowledge. But many people look to those outside themselves, psychics, doctors, psychiatrists, priests, ministers, friends, for the answers to overall life situations. And in so doing, they deny their own abilities of self-understanding and growth. Because of your educational framework, the individual is taught to be wary of the inner self, as mentioned earlier, so unfortunately the ordinary man or woman looks for the solutions of personal problems outside of the self, where they can least be found. If you use the methods given in this book, you should know yourself far more intimately than you did before, and be better equipped to handle your personal reality. Simply knowing that you form your reality can free you from some limiting concepts that have held you back in the past. You can then examine your beliefs creatively, finding the correlations between them and your experience. The conscious knowledge alone will trigger intuitional responses within the inner self so that you will receive helpful information through dreams, impulses, and ordinary thought patterns. If you affirm the basic grace of your being, then this will automatically weaken the beliefs you have that are contrary to that principle. You will be able to hold equally within your experience the vision of an quote-unquote ideal self and all those natural deviations from it. You will begin where you are and joyfully start to expand those attributes that you have now without expecting them to appear full-blown. You will love yourself and have no difficulty in loving your neighbor. That does not mean that you must be unaware of divergences from your ideal concept of the beloved. And again, it does not mean that you must smile constantly, but that you affirm your validity and grace within the dimensions of your creaturehood. As soon as you begin to compare what you are with some idealized concept of yourself, you automatically feel guilty. Until you work with your beliefs, this guilt can be initiated by the most harmless episodes and characteristics. It is a good idea to write down a list of specific acts or incidents that fill you with a sense of guilt. Often you will be able to trace them to early childhood beliefs quite easily, some instilled by a well-meaning parent to protect you, or out of an adult's ignorance. Brought into the open, however, many of these will dissolve before your comprehension. When you affirm your own rightness in the universe, then you cooperate with others easily, and automatically as a part of your own nature. You, being yourself, help others be themselves. You are not jealous of talents you do not possess, and so you can open-heartedly encourage them in others. Because you recognize your own uniqueness, you will not need to dominate others nor cringe before them. You must begin to trust yourself sometime. I suggest you do it now. If you do not, then you will forever be looking to others to prove your own merit to you, and you will never be satisfied. You will always be asking others what to do, and at the same time resenting those from whom you seek such aid. 
it will seem to you that their experience is legitimate and yours counterfeit. You will feel shortchanged. You will find yourself exaggerating the negative aspects of your life and the positive sides of other people's experiences. You are a multidimensional personality. Trust the miracle of your own being. Make no divisions between the physical and the spiritual in your lifetimes, for the spiritual speaks with a physical voice, and the corporeal body is the creation of the spirit. Do not place the words of gurus, ministers, priests, scientists, psychologists, friends, or my words, higher than the feelings of your own being. You can learn much from others, but the deepest knowledge must come from within yourself. Your own consciousness is embarked upon a reality that basically can be experienced by no other, that is unique and untranslatable, with its own meaning, following its own paths and becoming. You share an existence with others who are experiencing their own journeys in their own ways, and you have journeying in common then. Be kind to yourself and to your companions. I am also journeying. What information and knowledge I have, I try to give to you through Rupert and Joseph, who are parts of me in your space and time, but they are themselves as I am myself. Now, Rupert's own beliefs in the nature of his consciousness helped bring about these sessions. Rupert and Joseph have both worked with the nature of creativity, and from an early age, each of them sought for answers, but most of all, they trusted the destiny and grace of their beings. They might have felt that they had lost direction at times. For certain periods, they might have had problems in which they forgot their aims momentarily, and yet their beliefs in themselves, individually and together, were strong enough to give them their present reality. Many who write want to develop and use the same abilities, yet it is obvious from their letters that their beliefs prevent them from trusting the inner self enough. You cannot fear your own being and expect to travel through it to explore its dimensions. First, you must take the simple step of affirming your identity. That affirmation will release those attributes that you have and open up new avenues of experience. They will and must be your own. When you ask others to interpret your dreams, for example, you are automatically putting the fulfillment of your own potentials a step away. When you ask another to tell you the direction of your life, then to some extent you keep from yourself the realization that you yourself possess. Without that awareness, no methods will help you. Now, in ordinary terms, this book has included no esoteric instructions to help you achieve what you may think of as spiritual development or psychic expertise. Yet, it is a preliminary for all of those who want to use creaturehood as a framework through which to perceive and experience other realities. As I mentioned earlier, you will not become more spiritual by denying your flesh. This is the life you are living. Trust the living that flows through you. By doing so, other realities will make themselves known. They will add dimension and depth to your present reality. You make your own reality wherever you travel and in whichever dimension you find yourself. Before you embark upon other journeys of consciousness, understand that your beliefs will follow you and form your experience there as they do here. If you believe in demons, you will meet them, in this life as enemies and in other realms of consciousness as devils or quote-unquote evil spirits. If you are frightened of your emotions and believe them wrong, then when you try quote-unquote psychic experiments, you may believe that you are possessed. Your feelings, the repressed ones, will seem demonic. You will be afraid to assign them to yourself, and so will think that they belong to a disembodied spirit. It is very important that you understand the true innocence of all feelings, for each of them, if left alone and followed, will lead you back to the reality of love. Trust no person who tells you that you are evil or guilty by reason of your nature or your physical existence or any such dogma. Trust no one who leads you away from the reality of yourself. Do not follow those who tell you that you must do penance in whatever form. Trust instead the spontaneity of your own being 
and the life that is your own. If you do not like where you are, then examine those beliefs that you have. Bring them out into the open. There is nothing within you to fear. My life is mine, and I form it. Tell yourself this often. Create your own life now, using your beliefs as an artist uses color. There is no condition that you cannot change except one indisputably physically accepted at birth within the realms of creaturehood, such as a liability in terms of a missing organ or a functional lack. If you have been filled with self-pity because of a disease or a life situation, then seize the initiative, face your beliefs honestly, and find out the reason for the difficulty. I speak with the inner vitality that is inherent within each of my readers, with the inner knowledge that also belongs to them. I close by saying, as I have said before, you are given the gift of the gods. You create your reality according to your beliefs. Yours is the creative energy that makes your world. There are no limitations to the self except those that you believe in. I am Seth. I speak my name joyfully, though names are not important. Then each of you speak your names with affirmation every morning. You create your life through the inner power of your being, whose source is within you and yet beyond the selves that you know. Use those creative abilities with understanding abandon. Honor yourselves and move through the godliness of your being. End of book.